a great time for us to stop for a moment and to think about our own sinfulness. To think about the fact that God himself has made it possible for our sins to be forgiven. And that we don't receive the cursings of that covenant being broken, but the blessings of, the, of God himself. And so it's right and good that we take a few moments and just pray. And so I would invite you right now to just bow your heads, if you would. And we'll be praying in just a moment. And let's just take a moment and let's remember why the cross of Jesus was so essential. Let's just remember that every single one of us, like those who've gone before us in the centuries before, we've all broken God's covenant time and again. But Jesus has paid the penalty of our sin by going to the cross, not because he deserved it, but because we deserve it. And so let's just take a moment And let's take our own sin seriously. That sin that Jesus has paid for. And let's confess our sin and let's pray together right now. You pray where you are. Well, dear Father, we come before you as people who, if we consider ourselves, take ourselves seriously at all, we are overwhelmed by the reality and the truth of our sin. I mean, sin is one of those universal things. It's just true. Every single person in this room has sinned before you and sinned against one another. And all of us, We deal with the effects, the fallout of sin every single day. And so, Lord, we come to you as sinful people. And we know that you extend to us a brand new covenant, an opportunity to have a fresh relationship with you because of the work of Jesus Christ, because you know that it's impossible for us to please you. It's impossible for us to be people who are sinless. It can't be done. We What business do we have in the presence of a holy God? And so, Lord, we thank you because you've seen us in our sin and you've paid the penalty for our sin on our behalf so that we can have a brand new beginning. And, Lord, that's the power of the new covenant. And that new beginning is fresh. It's renewed every single day. Your mercies are new every morning and they never come to a close. You are a covenant-keeping God, and you are a covenant-keeping God into eternity. And because of you and what you have done for us through Jesus Christ, we can anticipate an eternity with you as your children. And so, Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. Thank you for forgiving our sin at great cost to you. Thank you for making us your children. Thank you for extending your covenant love to us. We love you, Lord. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We've got a God who makes, has so much love for us that he has made a way for our sins and our shortcomings and our past and our present and our future to be overwhelmed by grace and mercy, by fully paying the penalty of our sin. He stops at nothing to make us right with him. You know what I would call that? I'd call that good news. And he invites you and me to be in a relationship in which he is fully invested. He is bound under the full weight of law to you and me as a part of the new covenant to everybody who calls on his name. And here's the power of all of this. I want you to get this. God was thinking about you. He was thinking about you by name when that covenant was formed all those years ago. And he knew that you would need a savior to save and to redeem, and to restore you, and to cover the penalty of your sin. But even knowing that, he loves you. He cares deeply for you. And he wants you to be in a relationship with him, so much so that he's made a covenant promise to you today. If you're here today, and you're outside of a covenant relationship with God, if you're here today and you say, you know what, honestly, I don't even know what that means. I don't really... No, I have never accepted the power and the grace and the mercy of God's covenant offer to me. Never done that before. 
then I just want to say to you, today is the day. And if you've received Jesus, and He is your Savior, and you're convinced of that, and you're convinced that you're in a covenant relationship with Him, but in your own mind, it just seems like the covenant has faded. I just want you to understand something. Everybody in your life will fail you. Everybody in your life will let you down. It's just a fact. But not Jesus. Not Jesus.